Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy, and I'm out here to test the 3.3 gigahertz Iron Horse video transmitter and receiver. And um, true to Alex style, I forgot my radio today. But I did remember the airplane and obviously the video system. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how many aircraft you can get in the air at once. We know we have eight channels here, but we don't know if all of them are usable. So the first test is going to be interfering with the same polarization. So we're gonna have a left-handed polarization antenna interfering on the adjacent channel. That's 20 megahertz away. And then we'll go two channels down and see how far we can get. And if I can get to the end of that road, then we know we're good enough for racing multiple people at once. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it up. We're gonna change out the antenna on the interference side to a right-handed circularly polarized antenna and see how much more gain that gets us and if that can get more aircraft in the air. So uh, with that, I'm gonna take a drive and uh, we'll see what this does. The first test I'm transmitting on channel four and interfering on channel three, both left hand. And you can see as I'm barely getting down the road, I'm already getting interference. But after maybe 100 meters at most, the video is completely gone. But now you can see on my way back that I'm getting a lot closer and the video still isn't coming back until I get right in front of the video receiver itself. This is because the video transmission is being blocked by the car. For the second test, I move my transmitting channel up one channel. So right now I'm transmitting on channel five and interfering still with channel three. You'll notice how much further I make it down the road. In fact, I make it almost all the way down the parking lot on the other side. Now, of course, the video goes out, but that's also, if you can tell, there's a line of trees. If you look just to the right of the screen, you can see a row of trees back there as my car makes it up the drive and back. Right now, it's getting blocked by the hill and you'll see it come back. And then as I make my way behind these trees, the video breaks up again. And then at the very end of the road, it goes out completely. However, on the way back, it's not so good. On the way back, you'll see my car pop out on the right-hand side of the screen. So it becomes in full view before the video actually comes back at the end of the road. Again, the signal is being blocked by the body of the car, thus weakening the signal. However, I feel that this level of interference is certainly acceptable when flying with multiple pilots in the air. Simply choose two channels apart and you'll be fine. Thus, even channels can all run together and odd channels can run together, so long as no one lands at another pilot's feet. In this test, I'm back transmitting again on channel four and interfering on channel three. However, the interfering transmitter is right-hand polarized where my system is left-hand. You can see I'm still getting interference despite opposite polarizations. And while I make it further down the road, it's not that much further, maybe 20%. The video blips in and out occasionally, but it's certainly not enough to fly with. On the way back, you'll see the video starts to come in as I get a little bit closer, but it also fades out completely a few times. Thus, mixing polarizations does not appear to be a way to run every single channel on this system. It's just too close. In this final test, I'm once again transmitting on channel five left-handed and interfering with channel three right-handed. So I have two channels of separation. However, in this test, I laid the antenna down on the aircraft rather than upright, thus exposing the null, making the signal as weak as possible. And you'll see what the effect of radiation pattern is on this system. As you can see, I'm still not quite at the end of the road and already the video is going out, whereas when the antenna was upright and had the same polarization, I actually had video at this point. However, you can see as I get to the end of the road, the video does start to come back as I'm turning my car around as I'm exposing the strong point of the antenna. On the way back, you can see the signal comes in a little bit sooner than when I used a transmitter with the same polarization, even though the null is exposed. Thus, this experiment shows an airplane in a bank and behind some object while other people are flying on the channel. But notice that at certain points, it does go out completely and then comes back. So you can fly with other people, 
but it's probably a good idea not to bank really hard when doing so. So after reviewing the video, it seems that the most we can get safely in the air at once on the 3.3 gigahertz iron horse is four. Now, why is that? I don't know. My belief is that, well, this is a one watt transmitter. That's a lot of RF power. And when you're flying with friends, typically you try to stay between 200 and 500 milliwatts because there is a lot of crosstalk at that much transmit power. So tomorrow, I'm gonna actually go out and flight test this. I'm gonna flight test it at full power with full power interference, and then I'm gonna screw on these. This is a 20 dB attenuator. It will cut the signal strength significantly, making this seem like a much weaker transmitter and making the interfering transmitter seem much weaker than it is as well. And we'll see whether or not it's possible to cut the transmission power to a more reasonable level and get all eight channels in the air at once safely and better yet, comfortably. I'm Alex Grieve and keep them flying.